Um, I thought I would share with you how I um, make this worm kind of um, form for some rings that I've been working on the last couple of months. I um, just kind of came across this a while back and these worm kind of forms just kind of popped out just playing around with this material. So I thought I'd share with you how I do it um, and maybe you could use it in your work. So. Um, First thing is that I work on a, this is a piece of marble. It's an old piece of a marble slab that I had kicking around and actually find it really nice to work on um, when you're working, when you're making forms like this, kind of these um, worm-like kind of things. It's nice to have something that's not going to heat up too much so that when you roll it out, um, it, it stays cool. So I think that's like why they make fudge on um, on marble because it stays cool. But anyway, so the next thing you're gonna need if you're gonna make worm forms uh, is you're gonna need some soft wax. Now I've got three different kinds here that I've just collected over the years um, from not not necessarily jewelry applications, just any, there, there are a lot of uh, sticky wax or soft wax is used in industry in a lot of different industries. So um, this block right here, this white stuff is from the stained, gl stained glass industry. Uh, they use it to stick uh, glass pieces onto forms when they solder them. Um, this red stuff here, I think I got from Rio, and I don't remember. I think I may have gotten this stuff from Rio as well. It's all, it's soft, it's pliable. You can um, pinch it and mold it. Um, it's sticky. Uh, and those are all also the disadvantages of it is that once you finally get a form you're happy with, it's really easy to to, to ruin it, to to squish it and, and lose the cool textures that you're gonna create. So this is all about creating textures. So the next thing, or how I came across this worm kind of thing is I was kicking through, looking through some old toolboxes and I found this threaded rod that I found at, um, I think an old junk store or whatever, for they charged a dollar for it. Um, this is not a bolt. Um, this is really a threaded rod or a machine. It, it, it's a machinist thread, I believe. It's not something that you would thread into wood or even, um, you know, most metal applications. It's a really fine thread. So for my, what I'm doing with making these worms thing, this is the, just perfect. So um, if you're looking through old junk places or whatever, if you have a machinist friend or whatever, you want some kind of fine machinist thread. There's actually a thread count to that. I have no idea what it is. Um, so the next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to take these um, little chunks of wax, these little chunks of um, pieces that you've cut off of this soft, pliable, molding, sticky wax, and create some um, kind of snake-like, like long kind of um, tapered pieces here. And then what you do is you take those pieces, once you get the, kind of the, the shape that you're looking for, like if you're making a, I mean, I just make rings, so I'm, I would be looking for, what do I got here? Okay, here's a here's a wide um, ring shank, you know, like what kind of what width um, piece of wax would look good on that? Um, so that's how I kind of dictate the 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 diameter of the wax that I'm creating. Um, so then you take this threaded rod, and it, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes first, but just start experimenting here. But what you want to do is you want to roll your finger over the wax and roll the wax over the threads, but you don't want to go too far. If you roll it multiple times, you'll get kind of a ghosted double image and it doesn't, the, the effect is not as good. So let's see, let's see what I, I can do here. So I'm taking my finger on here. I'm just going to gently kind of roll it along and let's see, eh, not that great. I'm going to press a little bit harder. Okay. Yeah, that's a little bit better. I don't know if you can see that. Let me try with a red one here. Maybe the contrast is better. You can actually see it. But So I'm pressing the soft wax down into those threads, but not so hard that it gets stuck or that I go... There we go. I don't know if you can see that or not, um, but that's got some good texture to it. Um, so then I would just move on down. Um, to the next section and do that again. And where the two line up or overlap, that's going to be a potential for that texture to not have very good continuity. That looks pretty good, actually. Um, and if you're actually making worms, I started out looking, kind of trying to make a serpent-y kind of like tentacle kind of thing, but actually wound up with earthworms are far more interesting, I think, to me because I'm more of a compost kind of guy anyway. Um, and so uh, I did that a couple of different ways. I would take a, another piece of sticky wax, kind of flatten it out. Is this going to stick? No, it's okay. It's good. Um, stick on there and then make that. I, 
I don't know what the anatomical name is of that smooth section on a worm behind the head, between the head and the tail. Um, but you can also, I, I also made a section of this by making the whole texture of the worm and then I hit it with, a, with my iron with some wax on it. And, um, and this is another way to kind of create that kind of, uh, there we go, laying that out on there, that smooth section in the middle of the worm's body. So there you go. That's pretty much it. Just sharing my little, little tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. Um, create these wicked cool kind of worm-like kind of shapes as you see on here. There's another one right here. You got to be careful with positioning this stuff on here. It's super easy to mangle the, um, you know, the, the soft wax, as I said. But um, if you oxidize this and then rub off the high spots here, it really pops out nicely. So... There you go. There's a tip from the Silver Beehive Studio. Take care of yourself.